This week, we're putting on Arabella's second broad streaks. The planks are already scarfed up and ready to cut out. These will also be the last we do in oak before we switch to the cedar. time to put the last oak plank on Arabella. So the plans for the boat call for cedar planking, but we put the bottom three strakes of oak. And the reason for that is the oak's just, it's harder um, and it's a lot stiffer. So down low where the bronze floors are and we're connecting the planks to the frames, to the bronze floors with the carriage bolts, and where that extra weight isn't an issue and the extra rigidity is actually a benefit. So we decided to put the bottom three planks on an oak. And then after this, they're gonna be the cedar. Now before we get to the cedar, we need to do a little more housekeeping. So we never finished the rabbit on the stem and the stern. We gotta wrap that up. We got a couple frames up there that we need to make, and we gotta drill for the prop shaft in the stern. Once we get those things wrapped up, we can jump into the planking, and then it'll just be the cedar up to the shear. The cedar should go on a lot easier. Uh, it bends easier, it's a lot lighter, and it's a lot easier to work. So putting the cedar planks on should go a bit faster than wrestling these big heavy oak ones on. And speaking of wrestling the oak ones on, we had a lot of people who commented and wondered why we didn't steam the planks. And the reason we didn't steam them is because we didn't really need to, and it honestly would have just taken a lot longer. So we would either need a 30 foot long steam box to put these in, and then we really only have a couple minutes between steam box to get clamped on the boat. So a better solution would be to put a bag around them and steam them in place. And if we did that, we would have boiling water inside the boathouse and the bag would be off-gassing the steam and it's 90 something degrees already inside this greenhouse that we're working in and that would make it miserable. Uh, and by the time we waited for the plank to get hot and steam and bend in, we could have clamped it into place two times in that amount of time. So it really wasn't any great benefit to steaming them. And one of the other things, these oak planks, they're not perfectly seasoned yet. They're probably half to two thirds seasoned, which is great because when they're gonna go in the water, they're gonna swell up and seal up, but they're not gonna swell crazy amount, which is good. Uh, but having them not be completely seasoned makes them a lot more pliable. So they wrap around the boat really without that much force. And after just overnight on the boat, the, uh, they hold the shape and the twist incredibly well. So these planks are adapting to their, to their new form really well. And, there was no real benefit to steaming them. If they had been very dry planks or had been really much bigger, maybe it would have been worth it, but for us, it was just easier to clamp them down. So with that, let's get back to work. First thing we had to take care of was cleaning up the rabbit. No different than before, just checking through with the fids and the battens and using whatever tool worked best.
Steve worked both sides of the stem, while Casey and I worked on either side of the stern. Once we were feeling good about the rabbit, it was time to start cutting out the port side broad streak. Casey made our first straight cut with the regular skill saw before we set up the modified one to cut the changing bevel on the other side. We had already made and transferred the marks to the plank. We just needed to set up the aluminum track that will guide the saw. There, a track. So pretty good day today. We got the next broad straight cut out. So Casey and I worked on cutting this thing out while Steve was cleaning something up in the back of the boat over there, um, which was kind of neat because I haven't had the chance to actually cut one of these out by myself. Um, so I got to use this gill saw jig that we built to cut the bevel on the edge here and uh, had to figure out this little nib that we have that is going in front of the nib end uh, from the last broad strake. Uh, so that was kind of neat to figure out. Everything looks pretty good. Um, Tomorrow we are going to clamp it on the boat and see how everything fits and start backing out, which is pretty cool. Uh, this next strake seems much, much flatter. There's going to be much less backing out to do, so it should be a lot easier. And hopefully we can get this thing hung tomorrow. Well, at least hung and shaped, and then we got to paint it, and then it's going on. We need more eights. I was going to say if we went to, uh, to the Harbor Freight and go get a bunch of eights. Yeah, and actually... We need to get a lot of the bottoms in on these. I'm not coming in. Otherwise, we're going to have to set up the cargo straps somehow again. But I think at this angle, it's going to be much more difficult. I don't know if we can do that anymore. Can I help you in any way? Yeah. At this point, we intentionally leave the ends of the planks long. Only after we get a sense of what is happening and how much we'll need to back out, do we start to make decisions about how to cut these. As Steve says, it's something you need to sneak up on. After the first time up on the boat, I marked up the board and got ready to do the backing out, and Steve took care of a few high spots in the frames with the ads and the spoke shaves.
It was getting late, so we left the board clamped overnight. I would come back in the morning before marking it up again. Steve started marking up the starboard broad strike. We were hoping to have it cut out by the end of the day. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad that you now agree. And I walked around the boat, marking the port side before taking it off again for adjustment. Kira worked with Steve on helping to transfer measurements for the bevel to the plank, so they could be read while cutting out later. Uh, I'll call you the number. So in this case, 5 degrees, and then you're just going to add 3. So 8 degrees. Good mm -hmm. job. <laughs> and then, yeah, next to that line, I'm just going to write 8. Do I put the degree? Yep. And then we'll know that that's the 10 inch mark and that should be 8 degrees. We're adding 3 degrees to the measurement because that will give us room in the bevel to work with. Sounds good. And you're not going to add the 3, I'm adding the 3. You're adding the 3. Perfect. 11? 10? 10. Unfortunately, this was as far as we got with the starboard plank before a giant thunderstorm exposed a few leaks in the boathouse that really needed to be taken care of. What's up, buddy? You don't like that, huh? Thank you, bud. <laughs> Definitely does not like the thunderstorm. But what we did do was the last of the backing out on the port side. And with just a few more adjustments, it was ready to sit on the boat overnight. The next morning, we painted it, oiled it, spread out the dolphinite, and it was time to clamp it down for the final time. With only a few wax screws going into the stem and stern, most of this plank is held on by two bolts at each frame. These bolts also pass through the bronze floors, which makes attaching these pretty time consuming. There's gonna be a humongous difference when you're above the bronze floors. This whole <laughs> process can go a lot faster. Yeah, it will. <laughs>
when we put the garber planks on, the end of them on the stem kind of comes to a really long skinny point. And that's, it's okay, it's totally fine, but we are not really a huge fan of that. And the reason is that that long skinny edge, uh, when we caulk it, especially over time, there's a higher chance of that splitting and cracking and doing something funny. So what we decided on the rest of the planks going up is that we were gonna put a nib on the end of that. So instead of having this long skinny tip, we ended up with a short blunt point and then the next plank would kind of have a hook that went over that and that would eliminate that really skinny edge and then we could just plank or <clears throat> I'm sorry we could just caulk that little vertical seam when we caulk. Um, so it'd be a pretty easy solution and it's very common on boats. So we started doing that and what we realized when we got to the last oak plank here on the starboard side is that the way the jig is made we can't just run in on the end because that nib is there. So we were kind of thinking that maybe we we're gonna have to plunge cut with um, a regular skill saw set to 90 and then put that bevel in by hand so that we could then go to the bevel cutting saw and set that bevel and go. But thankfully what we realized is that Alex can just hold the base of the saw down and we can set that bevel to begin with and we can just plunge with the base down using the guide on the back of the saw. And that way we can just plunge in at an angle and then be set up to just continue the cut. So it's a pretty easy fix and we're only going to have to do it on the starboard side planks and we're only going to have to do it for maybe the next six to ten planks and then the stem starts to pull up steeper so we're not going to end up with those really uh, skinny feather edges at the tip. So thankfully it's a pretty quick solution um, so let's fire up the saw and get this last oak plank cut. Before trying to do it on the oak, we tested the plan to plunge cut the bevel to work around the nibs on a scrap piece first. That looked like it worked pretty well. That looked like it worked really well. <laughs> Degrees. Just like that. Great. Check this little guy out. This is how the plant starts when you first put it on. She'll settle down.
Started camping it, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue clamping it forever just because this is the clamp that never ends. Cool. We left the uh, starboard side second broad straight clamped overnight, and everything seems settled and good. We gave the clamps one little crank this morning. Most of them didn't move at all, but a couple of them did, so we got a little more distance out of it. And the seams and everything look great, so now we're just going to fasten this off. And like we said before, that'll be the end of planking for a little while while we go wrap up some stuff on the stem in the stern. Are you familiar with Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Yeah. Alex is Samwise Gamgee. <laughs> Everybody thinks that I'm carrying the real burden, right. but Alex is actually carrying me carrying the burden. Right, that's He's right. He's like the unsung hero. Like, none of this would ever happen without him, but he gets like virtually right. none of the credit. Right, yeah. Yeah, who's the face on the camera? Right. Exactly. Yep. Alright, well, let's carry this plank. <laughs> <laughs> 